Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about creating print on demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please hit like and subscribe and stick around. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about stamp designs. So stamp designs are another thing that I've seen trending a lot lately and stamp designs can be super easy to do. Um, because they really only take a couple steps and you can make hundreds, thousands of stamp designs that can easily go up on lots of different products. So this is an example. This is one of my shirts on Merch by Amazon or on Amazon right now. And it's just titled Scary Halloween Stamp T-shirt. And it's got my brand right here. But this was super fast and easy to make right here. And I'm gonna show you how I did that and using Canva. You can also use Creative Fabrica. There's also a lot of pre-made stamp things that you can do as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. But first I'm gonna go ahead and just jump over to Canva. And so because I'm making a shirt design, I'm gonna go with custom size. And I'm gonna go with 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. That's the size I use for all of my t-shirts. Now the stamp can be square, it can be rectangular. You don't have to use um, you know, any particular layout for the stamp. I'm gonna go ahead and select a black background. And the first thing I wanna do is just sort of get a stamp border. And that's really easy to do. So if you go over to the side and you go to elements, you can search for just stamp, any stamp actually. I'm gonna do photos, though they do have, by the way, frames that you can use. I didn't like the frames because they didn't look, they didn't look as real as I'd like. So for example, here's a frame where I can just drop my picture in a frame and it gives you a stamp look, but I wasn't super fond of the border. Yes, you can change the colors, but I still, it looked too clean. I wanted it to look more like a real stamp which is why I went ahead and used the photos of stamps, but you can always do the frames and that makes it just super, super easy. Um, here, if you're picking a stamp, I can pick any kind of border that I like. Most of these stamps will have a little black rim around them and it can be hard to do the background remover on the black rim. So if you can find one that actually has the white around it, that's gonna be easier to do the background remover on. And so you might have to look a little bit to find a stamp that works well. Here's one if I wanted to do a square stamp, that might be a good example. Um, but you might have to scroll to find one where you can easily remove um, the background and just get sort of the edging that you like. Um, and I'll show you, you know, let me show you an example. So for example, this one, what you can't really tell is it's got a little bit of a black edge here. All right, so you can see that black edge. If I wanna do a background remover and I hit edit image and I do background remover, it doesn't always, oh, it worked on that one, yay. It doesn't always do a good job of removing the black. It, I found it's easier if you use the whites, but actually that worked really well. So this is one I could use, for example. So this could be sort of my stamp. And what I would do then, it would be put a picture pretty much covering up this orange part and just sort of using the edge of the stamp here. And this has more of that rough, uneven edge that I would like to see versus the other ones that just looked too clean. And so from here, you could put anything you wanted in terms of a picture in here. So you could have a stamp for literally anything. Um, so Halloween was coming up, so Halloween looked good. So I could do Halloween backgrounds and see what I could come up with. And now you can search through photos, you can search through graphics and see if there's any cool like haunted house type stuff that you might wanna put in. Here's, you know, all sorts of different, you know, backgrounds that you could use. Anything that you think might look good as a picture on a stamp, you could use. Um, here's a spooky witch here. And so there are just tons of things as I'm looking through the photos, there's some cool ones that might work. Like for example, just to show you what this would look like, I might actually bring that down. I might bring that over, might crop over from the side. So literally I'm just cropping the picture to fit inside the stamp. So something like that. And then I can go ahead and put the stamp marks on it. I can put, you know, scents or whatever on it. I can add anything else, but I mean, it's that easy to make a stamp. Now I'm not super fond of a lot of these that I'm seeing here. You can also go ahead and look through graphics and see if there's any good graphic backgrounds 
Um, sometimes you'll get some good ones. I've actually found more luck using Creative Fabrica. So if I jump over to my Creative Fabrica account here, I just did a, um, a search for Scary Halloween. I checked backgrounds, I checked print on demand, and you'll see lots of other really cool scary ones. And it'll also give you some ideas too. So here's like coasters. So you could do Halloween coaster sets using some of these and that looks pretty awesome. So I'm seeing a lot of Halloween coasters. And then there's just a whole bunch of, you know, cool different, you know, pictures that you could use, all sorts of ones. So you might have to look for a while, but there are tons and tons and tons and tons of things that you could use. So to show you kind of what I, um, what I did for the example here, let me go back. I'm going to go over to my uploads and show you what I uploaded from uh, Creative Fabrica. So over here are some really cool Halloween um, designs that I got off of Creative Fabrica. And I thought that a lot of these made some really awesome stamps here. So these are some of the ones that I used. For example, this one here looked just really cool. I liked it. So I went ahead, um, took that there, shrunk it down, tried to sort of center the face a little bit, and then cropped in from the edges, something like that works really well for the stamp. If I want the background, by the way, to be a little bit darker, I could have always picked a stamp that had a darker background. I could also go to edit image, go to adjust, make it a little bit darker if I wanted to, give it more of a little orangey tint if I wanted to. Um, so, you know, add a little saturation there and I can try to make it match a little bit better that way too. Make sure I cover that orange exactly. And so now I've got that. And then what I want is sort of those stamp marks. And so that's easy enough to do as well. So I can go over to elements and I, I think I put just stamp marks. And so here we have some of those lines, some of those stamp lines, circles, circles with lines. So there you go. Any of those that would work really well on here. I mean, so for example, if I take these lines here, they're black, I can go ahead and throw those stamp lines over the top here. I can also add, you know, one of those little circle things too. So it just depends what I'm looking for. If I can try to find one that has, you know, some of the circle, I can just do a regular circle here too. It doesn't have to like show up a lot. I can make that black, for example, I can go ahead and you know, sort of crop it in to do something like that. So you just sort of see the side of the circle and the lines. Let me move those lines up a little bit too. Something like that. So, I mean, that's easy enough to sort of get those stamp marks in there. If I want to add like the two cents or five cents or whatever I want it to be, I can hit T, pull up a text box. Let's say I was going to go with five cents here. I can make that a little bit bigger and I'm going to put the five here and there's a couple different ways I can kind of make it lift if I want it to be light or dark, but let's say I'm going to do that. Maybe I want something a little bit bolder. I guess I could just do that, but I'm looking for something maybe a little bit more formal-ish. There's a good five and then I can always just look for the scent mark. And here are some different scent marks here that I can use and you can pick any one of these. And so here is one, for example, and I can shrink it down and I can put it right there as well. Depending on kind of how I want that to look something like that there looks fine. That background back to black so you can see this. And then I can go ahead and go over everything, group it all together. There we go. And now I've got my stamp and I can make that stamp as big as I want, as little as I want. I can put it anywhere in the page. So try to center that stamp like that. And that looks pretty cool there. And you can make a zillion of these. It's so easy. And once you have the template, I could literally just keep this template and just keep covering up the picture. So for example, I can just go ahead, duplicate the page and then go back over to my uploads and pick a different picture. So let's go with the spooky house. And let's say here, I want my spooky house. It's just gonna cover that up 
pretty much exactly there. Spooky house. Bring my spooky house over. Crop it in. Crop it in. And then here's all I'm going to do. I'm going to hit control of my left bracket. Oops, I got to ungroup this first. Sorry. Ungroup. You do have to ungroup it before I do this. I have to ungroup this. That way, when I send this to the back, it won't go behind the whole thing, but just behind each layer individually. So now I hit control, my left brackets, and I'm going to do that and something like that, except now you can see how that can look. And so just like that, I've got another one with the same exact layout. And so now I have two scary stamps. So again, can be done super quickly and can be scaled out tremendously and can be used for just about any niche you can possibly think of. So if you have any questions about this, drop it in the comment section below. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. If you have requests for videos, you can throw that in the comment section below. Again, I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. And if I can add you to my list, I will. I do read the comments and thank you for all of your kind words. Um, I hope you guys are really excited for the fourth quarter. I hope your sales are going well, and I do hope to see you guys again soon. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative, and we'll see you next time.